Gable Stevenson had one of the most dominating performances at the Big Ten Championships. But does that make him a true Hodge Trophy contender? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name's Josiah, and welcome to Fanco Wrestling, right here for the Big Ten Tuesday topic. This week, discussing Gable Steeson and whether he is deserving of the Hodge Trophy. Now, if you watched him this weekend, I mean, oh my goodness, the heavy was just absolutely dominant from beginning to end. Started the tournament with a tech fall, ended with a major over the number two wrestler in the country in Michigan's Mason Paris. And he proved that he was the absolutely most dominant deserving heavyweight to win the Big Ten title. And he made me the most dominant and deserving heavyweight to win the national title as we head into the NCAA championships. But does that mean he's actually deserving of the Hodge Trophy? So the reason this question is coming about is because I, after Gable's match, and I'll get into his match and exactly what I thought about it, I saw a couple of interviews, and after his interviews, this is kind of some of the things that he said. It got me thinking. How good did it feel to have a dominating performance over your rival in Michigan's Mason Paris here in the final? This ain't a rivalry. I came here and did my job. I'm 2-0 against him. I'm going to see him next week, though. I'm not worried about nothing. I put my skills on display right here. It's going to happen again. And I understand that. I understand that Guy will doesn't view Mason Paris as his rival, and rightfully so, considering the fact that Mason Paris has not beat Gable Stevenson in college. And usually with it, with a rival or a nemesis, you go back and forth, and that is something that hasn't happened here. So I understand that he's kind of taking, uh, taken aback by the fact that the reporter's asking him if he's a rival. But here's the other thing. This was his message to all heavyweights going into NCAAs. What do you want to tell the rest of the heavyweights? I'm coming for y'all again. And that raised a couple of red flags for me. I mean, listen, I understand it that Gable is a big, a big Showtime type of guy. But I'll get into exactly what I thought. First, drop your comment. Do you think that Gable Stevenson is deserving to win the Hodge Trophy? First of all, what is the Hodge Trophy? If you aren't sure what it is at this point, the Hodge Trophy is essentially the Heisman Trophy of wrestling. It's been given out since 1995 to a wrestler every single year based on their, it's, it's, really based on their whole college career, but really the single season, and based on many types of criteria, voted on by Hodge Trophy members, national media, uh, retired college coaches, and fans. Actually, fans even get a little bit of a vote, uh, and there are usually about 50 to 60 votes every single year that go towards a certain wrestler. Last year, Spencer Lee won it by it claiming 52 out of 57 total votes. Past winners have been Bo Nickel, Zane Rutherford, Alex Deeringer, Logan Stever, David Taylor, Kyle Dake, Jordan Burroughs. Those have been some of the most recent Hodge Trophy winners. So could Gable Stevenson actually claim it this year? That is the question that we are asking in this video, and it is based on some of these criteria. So there are actually seven criteria that go into getting the Hodge Trophy, and this is going to be super important, so make sure you listen to this. This is super important as we discuss the rest of this video. So first of all, it's the record of the wrestler going into the season. Number two is number of pins, dominance on the mat, your past credentials, quality of competition, sportsmanship, and citizenship, as well as heart. These are the criteria that go into winning a Hodge Trophy. And certainly the winners that have won it in the past have had this. So first of all, let's talk about why Gable is deserving of winning the Hodge Trophy, why he actually should win the Hodge Trophy. And I think that there is a good case that Gable could win the Hodge Trophy. And as I said, he had one of the most dominating performances this weekend and so far this season. As we compare him to one of the other top Hodge Trophy contenders in Spencer Lee, you look at some of the comparisons here. I mean, is he a, or he does have a better record than Spencer Lee, and he's 13-0, Spencer Lee 7-0. Both guys are undefeated, of course. Now, Gable has three pins to Spencer Lee's five, so less pins there, but still plenty of bonus points. I mean, he's 85% matches won by bonus point. Spencer Lee is 100% of his matches won by bonus point. He's arguably, though, tougher competition. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on what you value as tougher competition. Like, he majored, Gable Stevenson majored number two, Mason Paris, but he actually hasn't wrestled the number four through nine ranked guys. 
he's he's a multiple time Big Ten champ, and even like I said, this season wins over Cassiope, wins over Luke Luffman. He pinned him. Uh, Lance Orndorff, especially similarly, has wins over top ten, top fifteen guys like Liam Cronin, uh, McKee, Foley, Schroeder, Ragason, Cardani. So that's the important thing, and, and then you see kind of what I I have there is the big thing that's going to come down to it is is the sportsmanship and citizenship and i'll get into that in in the big importance of his and mason paris is beef i'm not going to call it a rivalry because i i guess i I do agree with gable it's not necessarily a rivalry because gable just keeps winning and he wins in dominating fashion now on one hand you know i like to call penn state and ohio state football rivalry and Ohio State usually beats us in at least the last three, four, five years. It's been quite some time since we've won in football, but I still consider it a rivalry overall. But as we talk more about, you know, Gable and his dominating performances over these guys, tech falls, six tech falls over quality competition with the pins and major decisions, it is impressive. And that is why he's, that's the reason why he is deserving. So let's talk about the reason I think that he isn't deserving. And I did allude to this. Because it is based on all of these criteria put together. It's all of these credentials. It's your record. It's your dominance. It's your quality of competition. And if Gable ends up winning the NCAA trophy, he has all those. He definitely has all those. But what he doesn't have, in my opinion, is the sportsmanship. And this is where the controversy comes in. I I am willing to take flack. I'm sure I'm going to take flack. Because I know there is a lot of love for Gable Stevenson. And listen, I get it. He's a showman. He loves he loves his sport. He loves putting on a show. But sometimes he can toe the line a little bit and take it just a bit too far. So let's set the groundwork here with the Mason Paris and Gable Stevenson. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you just see that Gable's winning by huge margins. And I would understand that. But you don't see all the antics that happen on or off the mat. So Stevenson beat Mason Paris in the Big Ten Finals last year by a score of 8-6. to six. It was actually a relatively decent match. I mean, Gable controlled the match for the most part, but it was a pretty good match. And so the fact that he made, or made sure him in this year's Big Ten Finals was just crazy. But from that year off, you know, these two guys did not get the chance to wrestle in the NCAA Championships. Of course, the NCAA Championships were canceled, and so they didn't get their shot to wrestle. So, over the over that time, Mason Paris goes on, wins senior nationals, and these two end up, you know, with all the rise in the freestyle cards, with the flow wrestling cards, with the RTC Cup, when there were plenty of teams, and each of these guys was on their own individual team, they had the chance that maybe they were going to get to wrestle in freestyle, but maybe they were going to get the chance to wrestle. Well, go for Wrestling Club, ended up setting out, sending out Nelson instead of Steeson in the match against Mason Paris. Mason Paris did not like that. There was some definitely some beef going down here on Twitter. This is kind of the big things that happened here. Is, you know, Gable Steveson tweeted out a little uh, smiley face, and, and then Paris said, why, are you, why do you keep running from me? Why are you running from me? And all kind of in good fun, but... Gable kind of said that he was going to the RTC Cup at Flow Wrestling to be able to wrestle Nick Kwiatkowski, who is arguably one of the best in the United States right now. And he wanted to be able to wrestle him to try to beat him. And Gable did beat him. He beat him by a score of 4-1, to one, which was impressive. But the, the Twitter beef is really where it started there. And it's been covered uh, on YouTube. Maybe, you know, Stalemates covers all the Twitter beef going on there or on Twitter. And they didn't get to wrestle in a dual meet, unfortunately, this year because Minnesota and Michigan did not wrestle. Going into the Big Ten Championships, we were finally going to see these two wrestle. And Mason Paris, you know, Gable made his way into the finals. And then Mason Paris majored Greg Kirkley in an impressive victory. He pinned Anthony Cassiope, which he just came out there and handled him, which to me, I was just not expecting that. It, he Paris just pinned him with absolute ease, like it was just like it was just clockwork. It was just business. That's what he does. And he he came out and actually interviewed after the match. And this is what he had to say. I'm, I'm super pumped for it. You know, it's going to be, you know, a good match. We're going to go out there and compete. You know, as hard as we can, give everyone a show. It's going to be a lot of fun. So look to me, that, that was just it was classy. He was looking forward to this match with Gable Stevenson. And listen, I understand. Like like I said. Paris actually was the one who originally retweeted that tweet, and he was kind of starting some stuff. To me, it seems like it's kind of in good fun with Mason Paris. Granted, he is, he was the underdog here, so he is the underdog going into the NCAA championships. 
But, and again, I will tie this back into whether Gable deserves to win the college trophy. I just had to set the stage for these two coming into this match. So Gable, we enter the Big Ten Championships, we enter the Big Ten Finals, and Gable just is putting down on a takedown clinic. He is just taking Paris down just with ease, just, I mean, just driving through him every single shot. He is, he's looking like a better wrestler than Mason Paris. Did not expect that to happen at all. And maybe you're a Minnesota fan. Maybe you're a Gable Stevenson fan. And you just absolutely expected that. And I understand that. But that's why they wrestle. That's why we give them a chance to wrestle. And then we get into the third period. Like I said, Gable Stevenson's leading pretty big. He's up by a score of 9-3 to three with a minute left. And this is what happens. Oh, go, no. Cutter. He's confident. Yeah, yeah, this is... So you kind of see what happens there is Gable Stevenson, he, he mouths, no chance. You have no chance. You have absolutely no chance. He's saying that in the middle of the match, he's telling Mason Paris that you can audibly hear the announcers just are, are baffled by it. They don't know what to say. And this is where, I guess, Gilbert Stevenson's, like, sportsmanship started to deteriorate for me. And I, I understand why he's doing that. It's because Gable wants to get into the WWE afterwards. That's part of his brand. That's part of his personality. It's it's kind of part of what he's doing. And Gable Stevenson is very smart at his branding of himself, which I do find impressive. But on the wrestling mat... I don't find it impressive. In the WWE, yes. In college wrestling, no. I don't like to see that. And I think it just shows that there is no sportsmanship there. And the antics honestly continued through the end of the match. Continued until the very, very end. When Gable just is, is putting it down on Paris. And he's just showing that he is the number one guy. And the other thing too here is that the Twitter beef just continued until after the match. When Gable even tweeted out, it was nice seeing you tonight. And I, I understand, like, he was retweeting the original tweet that these two, the thread that these two were originally on. And look, if you just follow the wrestling, you just follow Gabe Stevenson, maybe you think he deserves the Hodge. But after this performance this weekend, after the antics, I don't know. I, I just, I honestly don't know if he is deserving, if he is, if he has the sportsmanship to be considered the Hodge Trophy winner like a special Lee has special Lee comes out he dominates guys but he I guess he doesn't and he embarrasses them as far as like wrestling is concerned like how how can special Lee be that good but to me Gable was just em, trying to embarrass Mason Paris and I think that that's kind of the the difference there when it comes to these guys and I'd really like to hear your thoughts but I know that one guy does have Plenty of thoughts on this. They came in the Big Ten feature on the mat. I watched this just a month ago. It was honestly couldn't believe what I had heard here. This is Dan Gable on Gable Stevenson. It looked like he was heading in a little bit of the wrong direction as far as unsportsmanlike stuff like this. And I said, whoa, he's, he's new into this college wrestling. I think there's a line you don't cross. So from the mouth of Dan Gable himself, he even thinks that there is a line of sportsmanlike and unsportsmanlike. What do you think? Do you think that there is a line between sportsmanlike and unsportsmanlike? I know that this is probably going to be a controversial video. I've read comments back and forth. There are so many supporters for Gable Stevenson, and I wish him the best of luck heading into the NCAA tournament because he has shown that he is the dominant wrestler. He's one more tournament to prove it and win his first NCAA title. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Who do you think should win the 2021 Hodge Trophy?